I'm going to say this straight off. You look stunning. I didn't even want to hug you. You look. Stop it. Oh, oh my God. Don't, don't believe. Like, listen, believe. listen. Yeah, no, <laughs> believe the hype. Talker, Rudy. Yeah. I can't be that smooth. No, you look fantastic. Congratulations with the success of Big Brother Canada. But most importantly, you must have been thrilled when fans brought this back. Talk about this whole experience because originally we weren't sure if there was going to be another season and fans demanded it back. Chorus list. That it, honestly, it feels like a television miracle and it's so rare that this happens, but we have such dedicated fans. And I think that dedication is only matched by the team that puts this show on. There are hundreds of people who put this show together and we care. We put our blood, sweat and tears into this show. And so, you know, to find out you're going on hiatus, you know, if you've been in TV a while, I've been in TV a while, you've been in TV a while, you learn to just roll with the punches. And so I, while I was disappointed, I imme immediately flipped into gratitude because we got five years of this world-class show and we have fans from all over the world and all across Canada and it was something to be proud of and so you know when you work in uh, when you work in this business you're in the back of your mind you're always kind of waiting for that other shoe to drop right and so when it dropped it's like okay well we're, we're gonna move on no one's gonna die it's gonna be fine the fans you know the fans were having none of it the fans were like, this is our show and we want it back. And their devotion, the, the emails that they wrote into the station and the, the petitions they signed and the hashtag campaigns that went out, it was so incredible to watch. And it was like, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, it's, it's just it's the way it is. Like, you can't, you can't change something like this. And then to be heard as a fan to be listened to is such an incredible feeling. So I feel like that this season has such a special vibe because this was the season that the fans fought for and they got what they wanted. When does that ever happen? Uh, so we are thrilled. It's gonna be a wicked season. Okay, now you're gonna get mad at me because um, I, w I was talking to some people before yeah. this. I have never watched a single episode of Big Brother Canada, Big I'm Brother. Right? Uh, I'm, I, look, I'm, I'm being, because we're friends, be I can, real, be I'm real. being real about this. I've never watched it. So you're going to have to teach a novice on this. And there are some novices out there too. 100%. What is this big thrill when you can demand a show back? What is it? What is about this show that okay, fans I, are rapping about? I explain. explain it. I will explain it. I will explain it. Lots of shows are popular and lots of shows have big fan bases. That's not new, okay? So say you love a great drama, it's on once a week for an hour. It's great, kind of the end, right? Then there are shows that have some other aspect to it where it's not just the show, it's something else too. Game of Thrones has the books, Walking Dead has the comics. Big Brother Canada has live feeds. So because of this, for 12 weeks, when these, when these participants are playing the game, you can go online and see what they're doing at any given time of the day. You can make your own decisions about what you think about people, not based on an edit. When you get to see that yourself, you get to know people in a way that you will never get to know uh, someone else on any other reality show, or certainly not on a, a drama or a comedy where these are characters who are workshopped in a, in a writing room, right? These are real people. So I think, why the show has such uh, lasting power. I mean, it's been going for over 20 years. I mean, it's still, it started in Holland and now it's in 48 countries. Um, Canada's still like the newer kid on the block. So we're able to like take, uh, you know, inspiration from all of the big brothers around the world. And we have our own cult following. Like across Canada, people are watching the show, but we have a huge following in Brazil, in Mexico, in the Philippines, in Australia, in the UK, in Spain. Like people are shouting us out constantly because we, put the work in to make this world-class show in terms of the production value. But what our strength is, is that we have a very diverse country, which means our casts are very diverse. So where you'll notice in other Big Brothers, maybe not so much, you might have a couple of outliers. That is such a part of who we are as a country, to be able to see that reflected is so refreshing. And to see people who aren't walking stereotypes that you often see on so many other scripted shows and reality shows. So I think that's part of it as well. Um, but it's also, at its heart, a social experiment. So I'm really attracted to it from a psychological and a sociological perspective because I love seeing how people choose to allow their interactions to mold the path of their lives. And in this game, yes, it's a very superficial environment, but because they are real people and we're giving them real dilemmas each and every day in that house, 
you get to see what different people would do in that, in that circumstance. And then you get to ask yourself, what would I do in that circumstance? So for me, it's thrilling. Like I, the fact that big brother, you know, is not taught as a unit in every single sociology and psychology class one-on-one in every unit, I, it blows my mind because you can learn so much about people by watching how they interact with each other and how savvy they are. Who's really good at reading people? Who knows what somebody wants and knows how to manipulate them based on that? Who's, um, who's transparent? Who is, you know, maybe too emotional for this game? Who, who, you, who do you see that you know they're going to be eaten up and chewed up by some of the smarter players? I mean, I'm fascinated. And it can be really cutthroat, but that's the world we live in. So I think um, while it is still a TV show, the people who are in it, they're real people. And so their experiences are real. And so there's something so genuine about that authenticity that you just can't get anywhere else. Do you think Big Brother Canada reflects society on what's going on today? Um, it can. It definitely can. Um, and sometimes in the best ways and sometimes in the worst ways. Um, there's things that you can see play out before your eyes that make you understand other, like some of our darker human impulses, for example, groupthink, um, bystander syndrome. You see something, you know, someone doing something to someone else, and, and you, you, you feel powerless to stop, so you do nothing. That's part of our world. But also what's part of our world is um, love and community and those are my favorite. I mean, I love the game. I love the strategy involved in winning Big Brother, but it's those emotional moments that I don't forget. So in season three, Godfrey, um, who is known as one of our best strategists ever, uh, Zimbabwean Canadian, the moment when he was near the end of the game, he made it to final two, um, and his sister came into the house. They gave, I think they gave him like 30 seconds with his sister. And then he found out he was going to be an uncle again and she was pregnant. And like, they're crying and the joy that they share and everybody watching it is crying. I'm like, those are the things that you'll remember, those moments that resonate with your spirit. Okay, so, I'm going to yeah, jump in. Yeah. But what's been the most evil thing that you've seen Ooh. on Big Brother? Evil, when, when I say evil, well, not, you know, bad, like, yeah, you know, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, but, you know, where you're just like, oh, my God, I can't believe you actually did that to whoever. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I'm going to take it back to season two, which was a sick season. That was a good season, okay? Um, and I remember that... Uh, there, were, there, was, there was one duo in the house that ran that house, okay? And the girl's name was Netta, and the guy's name was John. I have to tell you this, because you haven't seen it, right? You've never, okay. So um, John was brand new, never really seen the season. He's from Newfoundland, hockey player, real people person, okay? But also emotionally very, very intelligent. And here comes Netta from Vancouver, a stylist, uh, incredibly smart when it came to the game and strategy. And she knew Big Brother inside and out. She was a super fan from when she was like 11 years old, okay? So they just got each other for some reason from two opposite sides of the country, two completely different lives, and these two were like unbreakable. Not a showmance, they were unbreakable though. And we watched them run through this house. She she knew all the game moves to make. He knew how to execute them, and he was a winner. So he would win competitions when he had to. And somehow, they didn't become targets until it was too late. Everybody realized that they were in trouble because they were a force. And then you get to a final three. So what happens at the final three is one person wins a competition, and they choose who they're going to come to the end with. When you get to the end, the jury votes, okay? So this last competition, John wins. And everyone's like, oh my God, this is amazing. He's gonna take Netta, his ride or die. And he cuts her and he oh. takes the other girl, Sabrina, because he knows he can beat her because the jury's full of his friends and he wins the game. Let me tell you, that was a moment. That was a moment. And the funny thing is, I mean, they look back and Netta's like, yo, I would have done the same thing. <laughs> but in the moment, just watching people who like, have each other's backs, understand that if they want to win, they do have to be a little cutthroat. That was something to watch. Epic season, epic ending. Those players are legends. Could you do it? Uh, hmm. Could I? Yeah. yeah. Could you win? Yeah. 
I could win. Will I is a whole other question, and that's going to be a no. But you know what? We've been around for a while. Um, so I started, uh, I came up through news, and I was a news reporter in Ottawa. And uh, I was in my last year of university at Carleton. And then the show came around called UHTV The Lofters, which was, for us, it was like ages ago. I was 22. I remember it. And yeah. And uh, we, it was more like real world. So it wasn't more like Big Brother. But we were still living on camera for a year. Um, working on little internet shows. This is like pre-YouTube, pre-Facebook, like ages ago, right? Um, but I think that experience really uh, gave me um, a sense of empathy for all the people who play because it's easy to you know applaud these people, but it's also easy to ridicule them. But you know what these people have that most people don't have is that is is guts, like to put yourself out there whole personality out there 24 hours a day for anybody to watch and make their own judgments that takes balls and so I like no matter and they're like my kids like sometimes they drive me crazy but I love them all because at heart of it I know they're brave individuals who are you know that everyone has their own reasons for doing it but the fact that they can represent themselves or their family or their communities or you know their their country of origin or whatever the fact that they get to celebrate that and still just be them like it's it's pretty amazing it doesn't happen every day it doesn't happen every day are you ready for this season I'm i mean ready. oh my gosh i've been ready a born ready born ready um where can we see, because we, we know when the show is going to be on, but where can we see the after feeds? Because I know sometimes I'm up at like 2, 3 in the yeah, morning, yeah. Oh, and you perfect. see, yeah. Perfect time. Okay, so the show uh, the, the show premieres tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on Global. Then it's on on Thursdays is when we evict people. The very first eviction will be this week. Um, and that show airs at 8, and then it's on again on Mondays at 9 p.m. Uh, all of the live feeds are free in Canada, which is awesome. Uh, and you can find that at bigbrothercanada.ca. And that's also where you can vote for uh, two house guests who have yet to be put into the house. So that's very exciting that that vote's going on. Um, and then you can see all kinds of stuff and videos from past seasons and some of our most epic moments. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. And this is what I mean. Like, it's an intensive show. So I kind of jokingly every year put up a, a, a gift that's like, a, or a meme that's like, you know, goodbye next three months of your life. But that's, that's how it feels. It's a lot to get into. And it's a lot of love. It's okay. a lot of love. I'm going to start watching. Please do. And let me know what you think. I'm definitely going to do it. Thank you so much. But more importantly, thank you for doing what you're doing because, oh, my goodness, girl, you represent so well. Wow. And you do such a great job in everything that you do. And the fact that five years this show has been successful, I think some of those elements has to do something with you, too. Oh, wow. I, uh, I, 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 I don't know what to say. Wow, I'm speechless. That never happens. <laughs> but it does. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much, Rudy. Thank you.